Uh, we shall now try to make a distinction between the uh, the Maxwell Boltzmann, Bose-Einstein and uh, Fermi-Dirac statistics. They are uh, in short called as MBB and FD statistics through uh, an example, a simple example say for example two particles uh, and uh, three energy states and so on. Uh, then we will uh, talk about this uh, theory of ideal gases and uh, we will derive uh, the Maxwell Boltzmann, Bose-Einstein and Fermi-Dirac statistics. Um, we will talk about the fluctuations in the particle number and how uh, you know uh, we can uh, get the classical limit of the quantum distribution and um, we will also uh, sort of list out uh, the differences between these three statistics. And uh, so, let us uh, try to see that uh, this MB statistics or the Maxwell Boltzmann statistics, uh, these are really for distinguishable particles. But then uh, we uh, take care of this indistinguishability by simply a Gibbs correction factor which is 1 by n factorial. So, uh, we will write down the partition function, the canonical partition function as 1 by n factorial and uh, then there is a sum over uh, uh, exponential minus beta e k and I just leave this sum uh, without an index because whatever index this um, e k is characterized by we have to sum over all of that and this n factorial is important which is the Gibbs correction factor. In the BE distribution, uh, there is no such uh, division by n particle and the partition function is simply uh, the sum over exponential minus beta e k. Now, uh, this is uh, uh, basically a, a very large number of particles can occupy one quantum state and um, uh, there is no and when they do, they basically correspond to one uh, state. And similarly, the FD also does not have any uh, distinction uh, of or rather there is a requirement of this um, uh, dividing it by n particles and uh, one can again write it uh, pretty much same way as the Bose-Einstein distribution excepting that uh, we have to keep in mind that there is an exclusion principle that uh, comes into the picture which uh, prohibits uh, two particles to occupy the same quantum state. Okay. So, at most one particle would be there in uh, uh, one quantum state unless you are talking about spins then of course, uh, there is a degeneracy and you can have an up and down occupying one quantum state. Okay. So, uh, let us take an example and the example is uh, uh, one of the simplest examples that we can think of. We take uh, two particles. and three energy states and three energy states can be anything it can be 0 uh, epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 or 0 epsilon and 2 epsilon or even uh, some of the bound state problem you can have a minus epsilon 0 and plus epsilon anything. Okay. So, let me just denote them by epsilon 1, epsilon 2 and epsilon 3 and um, these two particles although they are uh, indistinguishable and identical particles, we will still call them as A, B. So, that uh, uh, at least the Maxwell Boltzmann case, we uh, know how to distribute the particles. Now, the question is that uh, distribute uh, them, them, them means the two particles in the available three energy states. Alright, so this is the question that we have to deal with and it is uh, fairly simple. Uh, let me just make a table uh, so as to uh, aid this discussion. So, we are talking about Maxwell Boltzmann where they are distinguishable, but uh, the partition function will have a factor 1 by n factorial here of course, the n is 2. So, we have uh, epsilon 1, epsilon 2 and epsilon 3 and uh, these are like uh, the slots or these are like the boxes in which we have to uh, assign particles and because they are distinguishable we can write this as um, both of them in, uh, in 1 uh, that is epsilon 1 then it is epsilon 2 and then it is epsilon 3 um, or we can have uh, 
A in F B and nothing here or we can have a B A and nothing here, we can have a A nothing here and B here or we can have a B nothing here and A here or we can have um, nothing here A and a B and nothing here and a B and a A each of them are distinct configuration for the problem ok. So, this is the, uh, the total number of ways that it can be done and as you can see that there are uh, these uh, 3 plus uh, uh, 4 uh, plus 2 there are 9 ways of doing it of doing this distribution. And let me do it uh, here for the B and uh, we sort of again make this thing. Uh, so, there are these So, epsilon 1, epsilon 2 and epsilon 3, uh, well we are writing it slightly differently. So, so epsilon 1, epsilon 2 and epsilon 3 and uh, now they are of course, um, identical and indistinguishable. So, uh, to take into account the indistinguishability, we will write both of them as A instead of A and B. Uh, but there is no restriction on the number of uh, particles that can be uh, assigned to a single energy state. So, one possibility is this, the other possibility is this, third possibility is this, then we can have A, A and nothing, you can have A, nothing and A and you can have nothing A, A. Okay? So, clearly there are six ways of doing it. Okay. And uh, do it on the same screen as for the F D case and and now uh, in addition to their indistinguishability, no two particles can occupy the same state. So, that uh, sort of curtails the number. So, you have A, uh, A and nothing, A, nothing, A and uh, nothing, A, A and hence there are three ways of doing it. Okay? So, uh, see there are large number of uh, doing these distribution of particles in uh, between these three available energy states in the Maxwell Boltzmann case because swapping of the particle they are treated uh, as uh, an, a distinct arrangement okay? like uh, for these ones that you can see here let me show it uh, by uh, the laser. So, you see the A B and B A are two distinct ways similarly you know here A B and B A are two distinct ways uh, however, they are uh, not distinct uh, in the quantum distribution. So, these are this is the classical uh, distribution and these two are the quantum mechanical distribution. Okay. But we will show that uh, both the quantum mechanical distributions that is both B and F D distributions they actually boil down to the classical distribution either at uh, large temperature or in uh, presence of low density of particles. But uh, let us first write down the uh, partition function. So, the canonical partition function um, we know that canonical and the grand canonical they are related and uh, you only have a factor exponential uh, beta mu uh, extra in the uh, in the grand canonical distribution it has to be properly incorporated ok. But uh, the grand canonical partition function really uh, splits into or fragments into this uh, exponential beta mu factor with this whole raised to the power n say for example and then all these uh, these partition functions uh, for the canonical case. Okay. 
So, we have this as 1 by 2 factorial and then um, it is an exponential uh, minus 2 epsilon 1 uh, plus exponential minus 2 epsilon 2 plus exponential minus 2 epsilon 3 uh, plus twice of exponential minus um, uh, well uh, we are uh, this beta has to be there. So, uh, let me write that beta here. Uh, in fact, you should uh, include that beta. So, it is beta into uh, epsilon 1 uh, minus epsilon. So, this is uh, minus epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 plus twice into uh, x beta epsilon 1 uh, plus epsilon 3 and plus twice of exponential minus beta epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3 and so on. Okay. So, that is the distribution and we have uh, correctly divided by the number of particles which is 2 here. So, it is a 1 by 2 factorial. There are 2 um, distinct uh, states or two distinct possibilities, uh, one of them in epsilon 1, the other in epsilon 2 and the vice versa. These were taken care of by the, uh, this, uh, the, the terms, the last three terms which come with a factor of 2 because of this degeneracy. Okay. So, uh, what is it uh, for the B case, the Bose-Einstein? Uh, as I said that we do not need any factorial and factorial. So, we have a exponential minus 2 beta epsilon 1 plus uh, exponential minus 2 beta epsilon 2 just like the Maxwell Boltzmann case and um, then it is exponential minus 2 beta uh, epsilon 3 uh, plus uh, there is a distinct state. So, it is exponential minus beta epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2. Uh, plus uh, exponential minus beta epsilon 1 plus epsilon 3 uh, plus exponential minus beta epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3. Okay. So, these are the uh, 6 terms that you get there and uh, for the FD it is simpler because you have only 3 possibilities and these 3 possibilities can be written as uh, um, exponential minus beta epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 plus exponential minus beta epsilon uh, 1 plus 3 just maintaining the order in which we have written down this division of particles or distribution of particles uh, plus exponential minus beta epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3 and that is the uh, 3 uh, canonical partition functions. So, you see that um, these are the different ways of distributing uh, n particles in m energy available energy states. Okay. So, uh, if there are say uh, m, m possible energy states instead of 3, then let us write down that how many uh, states will be there or how many terms will be there. Uh, so, uh, that is given by this is for the uh, fermions uh, for F D statistics uh, this will give rise to um, uh, M C 2. So, uh, let us call it N F. So, this will give rise to how many terms is what we are counting and that is M C 2. Uh, so, that can be written as uh, M into M minus 1 by 2 which is nothing but m square by 2 minus m by 2. Okay. So, that is the number of particles and uh, if you are given an m then you can just calculate this thing as m square by 2 and m minus uh, m by 2. For uh, B e this n b is nothing but uh, this is uh, n Fermi plus m. Okay. So, this is m square by 2 um, because the number of uh, 2 particle uh, states for bosons uh, would include all possible fermions and plus m states which have both particles in the same energy. Okay. So, uh, this is equal to m square um, by 2 minus m by 2 
plus m. So, that gives you a m square by 2 and a plus m by 2 instead of a minus m by 2. And uh, similarly for the uh, mb distribution, so mb, so this is n uh, mb or classical, we can call it classical. Uh, let us write it mb because there are c also stands for canonical and uh, this is equal to you know uh, uh, 1 by 2 factorial and uh, n uh, which is classical and this is equal to m square by 2. So, in classical it is just m square for m energy states and because we have this Gibbs correction factor. So, that is 2 factorial which is nothing but 2, but this is how uh, these things. So, for F d uh, you have m square minus m by 2, uh, for bosons you have uh, m square by 2 plus m by 2 and for classical particles you have m square by 2. Okay. So, these are the different ways of distributing particles and their corresponding canonical partition function. Now, let us uh, derive the partition functions or uh, rather the distribution functions which we have not derived yet. Okay. So, we will write it as a derivation of the distribution functions. So, uh, how do we derive it? I mean uh, uh, it is not difficult to derive it. Uh, we just have to assume that uh, the total energy is constant and remember that we are deriving it for the canonical uh, sense or rather where the number of particles is constant, but it does not matter you can just simply put a minus mu n and we have told that a number of times that this uh, grand canonical partition function and the uh, canonical partition function they are same and then we will see that how these average number of particles or these distribution functions. By the way the distribution function means that we want to calculate the average number of particles in a given energy state epsilon i. So, how many particles could be there what is their distribution at a given temperature t and this is called as a distribution function. So, we calculate nothing but the average number of particles and we know how to get the average number of particles from say for example, uh, from the uh, partition function and this is what we will do. So, we assume that E is equal to some n i epsilon i and then there is a sum over i and uh, also we have the total uh, number of particles to be constant uh, sum over i and uh, we write down the partition function canonical partition function as uh, we can just leave it uh, sum over whatever uh, degrees of freedom that epsilon i has and then we can write it as epsilon uh, beta uh, and then uh, we have this e and uh, this is equal to nothing but uh, exponential minus beta n 1 uh, epsilon 1 plus n 2 epsilon 2 and so on so forth. Okay. So, uh, once again I just uh, want to emphasize that this uh, curly bracket that you see below the summation sign, I am not committing myself that what uh, would be those uh, summations over and that will depend upon uh, the quantum numbers of the energy or the variables on the energy that it depends on and how those, uh, those indices will take values. For example, now we can say that uh, this is really a sum over n i because these n 1, n 2 they will take some values pertaining to the condition that the total n i over all i should be equal to n okay, that is there. So, we want to calculate the mean number of particles. So, let me write that. Mean or average, they mean the same thing. Particles in a uh, given in a particular energy state.
and this is called as the distribution function. Okay, so let me uh, box it because there is an important thing that, so when one talks about a distribution, what it means? It means that uh, we want the average number of particles that could be there in that in a given energy state, so that uh, that gives me uh, the, uh, an idea of internal structure of the system and uh, finally those internal structure will have to be translated to something that we get experimentally by doing thermodynamics. Okay? So, there is that internal structure or the microscopic structure is given by these distributions or this average values of these distributions. Okay? So, uh, mean number of particles can be obtained by uh, doing uh, you know this uh, p which p is equal to that Boltzmann distribution. So, we this is equal to n 1 epsilon 1 plus n 2 epsilon 2 uh, and so on uh, divided by the canonical partition function. We have written this earlier this is the Boltzmann distribution. This is an important thing to notice that even the Boltzmann distribution as we have developed it, it belongs to classical physics, but this distribution at a given temperature T is equally applicable to classical and quantum statistics. Okay. So, how do we calculate the mean number of particles say n i? Uh, so, once again I just want to make sure that sometimes I might have written as n i bar uh, and sometimes as this but they really mean the same thing. Okay. So, throughout the course if there is any of these symbols that you see, they would mean that average number of particles are being talked about. Okay. So, this is equal to some uh, you know again this n i and that multiplied by p and uh, this is nothing but uh, so there is a n i and the exponential minus beta n 1 epsilon 1 plus uh, n 2 epsilon 2 etcetera etcetera and then it is divided by z. Okay. So, that is the average number of particles and that is what we want to calculate. Okay. This is easy to calculate because we have already uh, calculated something like this, it is 1 by z and then there is sum over these say n i's and uh, there is a minus 1 by beta del del epsilon i and these exponential minus beta n 1 epsilon 1 plus n 2 epsilon 2 uh, and so on and then uh, so this is that so 1 over z and this minus 1 by uh, beta del del epsilon i and acting on this so that the epsilon i comes out and this is what or rather the n i comes out sorry n i comes out and that is the expression that we you see it in the last line of this slide. All right. So, this is equal to uh, that needs to be calculated and this is nothing but this is equal to 1 over minus 1 over beta z and nothing but a del z uh, del epsilon i. Okay. So, uh, n i then is equal to uh, minus 1 by beta because this can be further simplified and can be written as del ln z del epsilon i. Okay. So, this is the formula for calculating the average number of particles and this is what we have uh, seen earlier. Right? So, you have the partition function, take the log of the partition function take a derivative with respect to epsilon i and that would give you uh, your average particle number. Okay. So, uh, this uh, we will sort of uh, will use it uh, for computing the distribution uh, for all of these uh, cases and uh, let me uh, just do it for the uh, Maxwell Boltzmann uh, start from a new page here. So, we will do it for the Maxwell Boltzmann case. So, Maxwell Boltzmann uh, the distribution can be uh, you know uh, so, the total partition function really for this uh, 
uh, non-interacting systems they split into one particle partition function raised to the power n and z1 is nothing but equal to sum over uh, i say for example exponential minus beta epsilon i. So, that tells you that log of uh, z which is equal to n log of z1 it is equal to n log of uh, these things uh, exponential minus beta epsilon i. So, that is the uh, log of z. So, we got log of z and now uh, go back to this expression that we have just derived uh, which is uh, you have to take this derivative with respect to epsilon 1 and that is the story that you have to follow. So, it is n i average is equal to minus 1 over beta uh, del ln z del epsilon i. I write down the same expression once more and this is minus beta 1 over beta and uh, then there is a n and uh, you have an exponential minus um, beta uh, there is a minus uh, beta uh, exponential minus beta epsilon i and uh, then you have this as uh, sum over i um, exponential minus beta epsilon i. So, I take a derivative with respect to uh, epsilon i of this expression that you see above and then the beta minus beta comes out here and um, there are two minus signs ok. So, these two minus signs have to be you know written with care. So, this um, the minus signs will cancel and the beta will cancel as well and we get this as e to the power minus beta epsilon i divided by sum over i exponential minus beta epsilon i. So, that is the uh, distribution that you have and uh, this is called as the, uh, the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution and if you want the distribution uh, per particle then you can divide it by this. So, this average number of particles and if you divide it by the total number of particles uh, writing Uh, or if you simply uh, you know uh, work with the one particle partition function then you will not get that n at all ok. So, uh, we implicitly sort of take care of that n and write it as exponential minus beta epsilon i and uh, sum over i exponential beta epsilon i assuming uh, that we are working with. the single particle partition function and why we can do that is that they are non-interacting particles. So, there is uh, no uh, interaction between one particle with any other or any with the rest of the particles. So, we can uh, deal with one of them and we can write down the we can write down the distribution function as this. So, this is called as the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. Okay. So, uh, now we go to the Bose-Einstein distribution. Okay. So, um, this distribution now will uh, so what we do is that uh, we will split it up into uh, a photon statistics and uh, boson statistics ok. Uh, they are same things of course, bosons photons are bosons, but uh, what we want to make sure is that uh, one of them does not have a mu uh, this mu is equal to 0 and in general mu is not equal to 0 for bosons and in fact, it has to be positive that is what we will uh, see. But let us start with the photon statistics which necessarily does not have a mu 
associated with it because we cannot keep the particle number constant. So, that constraint completely goes away and hence the Lagrange's undetermined multiplier goes away as well. Okay, so, we write down the photon statistics and uh, the way we can do it is uh, that uh, we uh, write it down for uh, so our z is equal to uh, summation over these uh, ni's and uh, we have exponential minus beta n1 epsilon 1 plus n2 epsilon 2 plus uh, and so on. Uh, so, uh, this uh, you know these n i's are really uh, are like 0, 1, 2 etcetera uh, for each of i's for each i okay? and this sum has to be uh, calculated okay? and uh, it is easy to see that uh, this sum actually factorizes and we can write down the partition function as n1, n2 and so on and then exponential minus beta n1 epsilon 1 into um, exponential minus beta n2 epsilon 2 and so on and all these brackets. Okay? And uh, so, because of this factorization of the partition function, it is easy to evaluate it and uh, what one gets is the following. So, all these sums then I can write it down as uh, I can write down this as n 1 equal to 0 to infinity exponential minus beta n 1 epsilon 1. Then I open another one this is n 2 equal to 0 to infinity exponential minus beta n 2 epsilon 2 and all these brackets will simply you know be uh, continued and you have the product of the brackets and if you can find out the product then that is uh, what you need. Okay. So, um, each term if you see uh, is uh, a GP series each of the brackets that you see here is a GP series uh, with the first term as uh, 1 and the common ratio between the two is exponential minus beta epsilon i. Okay, because between two uh, successive uh, you know uh, terms, there is exponential minus beta i. So that's a GP series, and uh, geometric progression we call it a GP series, and this GP series can be evaluated easily, and one gets um, the exponential minus beta um, n i epsilon i, and over each of those uh, uh, n i equal to uh, 0 to infinity as uh, these 1 plus exponential minus beta epsilon i plus exponential minus 2 beta epsilon i and this is nothing but 1 divided by 1 minus exponential beta uh, epsilon i. And of course, my exponential minus beta epsilon i is less than 1. So, this r the common ratio is less than 1 and that is why we can write it in this fashion. So, the partition function the total partition function becomes all these brackets which are uh, 1 minus exponential minus beta epsilon 1, um, 1 divided by 1 minus exponential minus beta epsilon 2 and all of that okay, for epsilon 3 and 4 and so on. Okay. So, uh, what you can do is that you can take a, a log of z and this is equal to a minus a log of um, you know. Uh, so, this is a, a product of this and log of 1 is equal to 0. So, uh, this is minus of log of 1 minus exponential minus beta epsilon i and there is a sum over these i. So, that is the log of z and now we know our prescription is clear that uh, we need to calculate this thing by taking a derivative with respect to uh, epsilon i in order to get the average number of particles in a given energy state. So, uh, we get again n i um, average is equal to minus 1 by beta uh, del ln z del epsilon i which is equal to 1 over beta 
del del epsilon i log of 1 minus exponential minus beta epsilon i and this uh, just one line it will give you exponential beta epsilon i divided by 1 minus exponential minus beta epsilon i. Okay. So, uh, the photon statistics is this exponential minus beta uh, sorry. Uh, so, this is equal to uh, that and uh, uh, your n s uh, is equal to you can simplify this and you get uh, you can divide numerator and denominator by exponential minus beta epsilon i. So, you get an exponential minus beta epsilon i minus 1 and this is called as a photon statistics. In fact, uh, this statistics was written down by Planck without a proper derivation later on Bose came and derived it and uh, uh, we have done the photon statistics. Now, we will have to talk about bosons and uh, like say for example, superfluid helium or helium 4 uh, which are bosons with uh, you know uh, the number of uh, electrons, protons and neutrons such that the total spin is an integer spin. So, uh, there the thing that we need to take care of is uh, we need to uh, have a mu or the chemical potential in order to which really talks about fixing the number of particles or rather uh, this condition that the total uh, number of particles is a constant the total uh, uh, number. Uh, so, in order to incorporate that we need this uh, mu which we have seen. and. Um, we can simply you know uh, write it here with eps uh, with put a bracket here and epsilon minus mu here let me show it by uh, laser pointer. So, if you put a bracket here and put a minus mu that is going to work, but then let us derive it uh, for a better understanding. So, uh, this is boson statistics. And uh, so, we have uh, a sum over i n i average that should be equal to n. So, now what we do is that we uh, temporarily shift to uh, the grand canonical distribution because the mu naturally originates there. Okay. We have seen that. So, we write down the z g which is nothing but the grand canonical partition function. So, this is equal to this n 1, n 2, uh, etcetera from 0 to infinity and we have these now the exponential of uh, minus beta uh, epsilon 1 minus mu whole to the power n 1 and ep exponential minus beta uh, well this epsilon has to look the same. Uh, epsilon 2 minus mu whole to the power n 2 and so on all these uh, brackets and we can write this down as a product term which is from i equal to 1 to infinity and we have all these brackets which are exponential minus um, you know beta epsilon i minus mu and this whole to the power n i and we again get uh, this product as 1 to infinity inside we can do a GP series sum and we get it at uh, 1 minus z f exponential minus beta epsilon i. Okay. Um, you know that z f is nothing but equal to exponential beta mu. Okay. So, uh, combining this, so we can write down this uh, n i average. Now, you know the prescription, we have done it a number of times. So, this can be written as exponential um, e to the power beta uh, epsilon i minus mu uh, minus 1 and this is called as the Bose distribution functions or it is for bosons okay. or it is also called as the Bose-Einstein distribution function.
okay and so there is the average number of particles in a given energy state and uh, we have beta equal to 1 over kt and uh, this zf as, as you see here it is the fugacity is called as a fugacity and then uh, that is your uh, distribution okay. So, now uh, finally, let us do the, uh, the Fermi Dirac distribution. We will show all these distribution, the plots of this distribution as a function of you know epsilon minus mu or something uh, separately. We will uh, do that in just a while after we do the uh, Fermi Dirac statistics. So, here keep in mind that uh, n i cannot be anything, but n i can be either 0 or 1, either a single particle state will have uh, no particles at all which is acceptable or it the, at the most it can have one particle. Okay. So, uh, this expression that you have uh, which is equal to sum over uh, n i n i into exponential minus beta n i epsilon i divided by exponential beta epsilon um, n i epsilon i and all these are like n i's and so on. So, uh, this has just two terms. So, n i is equal to 0 and 1 as I just wrote here. So, put n i equal to 0 and 1 and what we get is uh, so, we have these uh, the two terms they are so you have this um, okay. So, this n i equal to 0 and 1 is exponential minus beta n i epsilon i uh, with a n i factor here. So, this is 0 plus exponential minus beta uh, epsilon i. 0 plus epsilon i and then n i average will simply be equal to exponential minus beta epsilon i divided by 1 plus exponential minus beta epsilon i. Um, uh, you divide it by this things which will give you this 1 plus exponential minus beta epsilon i. If you divide top and bottom by exponential minus beta epsilon i we have exponential minus beta epsilon i uh, plus 1 and uh, we will simply uh, put this uh, mu by hand here. So, we can just simply write it as mu uh, and uh, so this is put by hand. Okay. Chemical potential. So, n i becomes equal to let me write it here n i average is equal to 1 by exponential uh, minus beta epsilon i minus mu plus 1 and that is called as the Fermi Dirac distribution function. Uh, sorry there is a, a f there is this minus will not be there because you have divided by uh, exponential minus uh, beta epsilon i. So, this becomes exponential uh, plus beta epsilon i. So, this is called as a Fermi Dirac distribution function. Okay. So, we have uh, derived all these three distribution functions which gives you the, the difference uh, you know in the sense that the, the Bose uh, distribution is uh, the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution is simply uh, exponential minus beta epsilon i uh, this is equal to 1 the denominator is equal to 1. Uh, so, it is simply ex uh, exponential minus beta epsilon i and or you can put uh, in the so you can also write it as n i which is equal to exponential minus beta epsilon i minus mu. So, now we have put it by hand. So, we would use this as a distribution now. Um, assuming this uh, you know the particle uh, number to be not constant or rather uh, the total particle number to be constant. So, that mu enters into the problem. So, it is exponential minus beta epsilon i minus mu. Then uh, for the photon statistics is exponential uh, 1 divided by exponential 
beta epsilon i once again I do not have uh, a minus sign uh, let me just uh, uh, yeah so there is no minus sign there of course uh, you divide it by the exponential minus beta epsilon i. So, this gives rise to the photon statistics and this uh, uh, where there is no mu or mu is identically equal to 0 when uh, for we are talking about other kinds of bosons which that follow these uh, statistics that uh, they are identical, but uh, any number of particles can occupy um, any uh, given energy state and this is called as a Bose-Einstein uh, distribution function which is exponential 1 by exponential beta epsilon minus mu uh, <coughs> minus 1 and, uh, uh, and then we finally have the Fermi Dirac distribution function which is exponential beta uh, epsilon i mu minus uh, plus 1 minus mu plus 1 and so we can just write all of these distribution as n i is equal to 1 divided by exponential beta epsilon i minus mu plus minus a where a is equal to 0 for Maxwell Boltzmann distribution and a equal to uh, minus 1 uh, or rather a is equal to or we can just simply write it with a plus a not plus minus. Uh, so, it is uh, for a BE distribution A is minus 1 and A equal to plus 1 for FT distribution. Okay. So, that is the sort of writing it uh, in a unified form uh, this distribution function and uh, we will see how these distribution functions are very important because we need to know this average number of particles and so on. Okay. Um, so, it is important to understand that uh, for bosons you know you can have uh, these uh, uh, the mu has to be uh, greater than 0 because otherwise you will have uh, negative occupancies or negative uh, average number of particles which uh, does not make sense. So, um, so for bosons epsilon uh, or rather uh, epsilon uh, mu minus or epsilon i minus mu should always be uh, uh, greater than 0. Uh, or rather mu should be greater than uh, 0 which means now this epsilon i are the single particle state. So, the epsilon i is take values and we are talking about non interacting uh, gas or non interacting system. So, epsilon i is actually take values from 0 to infinity and mu has to be greater than 0. Okay. So, that that is an important uh, uh, thing that uh, you know is uh, additionally required. So, uh, with this let us uh, do this uh, fluctuation in the number of uh, particles. So, fluctuation on this n i and uh, whether uh, all these uh, this fermions or bosons or classical particles they like fluctuations or what are their fluctuations etcetera. So, what we mean what we want is that uh, uh, fluctuations in this particle number. And uh, we are really talking about the sigma square equal to this n i square minus n i average square. So, n i square average and n i average square. Now, we just uh, got n i average for all these distributions, but getting n i square average is not a difficulty. You just have to take a double derivative with respect to epsilon i uh, of those uh, distribution functions. And uh, uh, let us just do it in um, the a grand canonical distribution. So, n i square is nothing but equal to 1 over z g uh, minus 1 over beta uh, and there is a, a del del uh, epsilon i square uh, and a z g and it is at a given fugacity uh, and uh, temperature. So, z f is again exponential beta mu. I am just using the um, relation that was derived earlier and in fact, this is quite useful to do that and uh, so, we uh, get this as uh, the sigma square as uh, it is n i square average minus n i average square 
and this is equal to minus 1 over beta del del epsilon i square log of z g uh, and z f t and this is nothing but equal to minus 1 over beta uh, del del epsilon i. I am just uh, skipping a couple of steps which you can fill up, it is easy to see that uh, and this is equal to n i and this is at a z f and t and this is equal to exponential beta um, epsilon i minus mu uh, this divided by uh, these uh, exponential uh, beta epsilon i minus mu um, plus a square and you know what this a is a equal to 0 for Maxwell Boltzmann a equal to minus 1 for Bose Einstein and plus 1 for Fermi Dirac statistics or the particles. So, these are uh, n i square is equal to exponential uh, beta into epsilon i minus mu and uh, this is nothing but equal to 1 over z f uh, exponential uh, beta epsilon i and this is nothing but equal to 1 by n i average minus a. Okay. So, uh, the relative fluctuation again is uh, uh, inversely proportional to this average number of particles which it should be and uh, so we have this sigma square by n i square uh, this is equal to 1 over n i for uh, this is called as the for the m b particles and this is called as a normal distribution. Uh, this is normal distribution where it is simply equal to uh, 1 by um, n i average which uh, a result that we have seen earlier and then sigma square by n i uh, average square and uh, you have a b e which is uh, is 1 by n i plus 1 and this is called as the uh, super normal distribution uh, because it is plus 1 that is why it is called super normal distribution and uh, uh, this for the other thing that is for the f d it is n i square is equal to or for the f d this is equal to 1 by n i minus 1 and this is called as the subnormal distribution. Independent of the name what it rather says is that that uh, the bosons actually promote fluctuations. In fact, uh, if there are large number of particles in one given energy state, it will favor fluctuations or rather enhance fluctuations and so that is why you see a super normal uh, this distribution for these sigma square by n i square. Whereas, uh, this hard core condition hard core means the uh, this Pauli exclusion principle is often called as a hard core which means that one particle does not like another particle and they repel strongly repel each other and uh, there is no it is not a possibility that two particles will uh, occupy the same energy state that is the that is the distribution or that is the statistics and that gives rise to a sort of um, uh, these uh, subnormal distribution. In fact, some of the experiments uh, actually uh, calculate or rather compute these uh, some of these uh, fluctuation in the particle number say for example, this uh, Hunbury Brown twist experiment that uh, looks at the uh, the particle number distribution for photons. Okay. We will not go into details, but there are experimental uh, ways of determining that. Okay. So, um, let me now uh, quickly tell you that uh, what are the classical limits, but before that let me show you this picture that uh, we have. So, this is how the uh, Maxwell Boltzmann distribution looks like uh, where we are really talking about this average number of particles uh, 
that is that is there well I mean this average number of particles and so on. So, uh, the Maxwell Boltzmann it looks like that as a function of epsilon minus mu uh, you have uh, you know the number of particles to increase um, as you go to uh, epsilon closer to mu or epsilon minus mu going to 0. And in fact, the Bose distribution looks exactly the same almost same ok it is only that as you come closer and closer to epsilon minus mu there will be a, a large build up of particles which is called as a Bose Einstein condensation which is what we will see. So, these uh, blow up is what we are talking about and there is a similar you know distribution uh, or rather uh, plot for as a function of epsilon minus mu. And um, these average particle number is also written as f at times you know. Uh, so, that is uh, some books will write it as f. So, they will show you this as the uh, Maxwell Boltzmann and Bose Einstein which look very similar. And um, it is only that the Fermi Dirac looks absolutely uh, dissimilar to the two, but there is one big similarity which one should notice is that as uh, at the large you know the tail of that uh, for each of the distributions they are identical which tells you that at large uh, temperature or at large you know uh, epsilon minus mu. So, there has to be a beta factor that uh, will make you understand this better, but in any case we will show that the tail of the distribution that at very large values of epsilon minus mu all these distributions give rise to same results which means that uh, as you go to larger and larger temperature or you as you go to lower and lower density of particles the quantum gases start behaving like the classical gases they become distinguishable and uh, the indistinguishability kind of fades out and um, they uh, start following the Maxwell Boltzmann statistics ok. And uh, so, you, you see uh, there is a nice tape like function for very small t uh, and at t equal to 0 is exactly a step or very sharp step ok. And that tells you that all states uh, which are in the negative epsilon minus mu they are all occupied and all states which are uh, greater than um, uh, epsilon uh, these epsilon minus mu or epsilon minus mu equal to 0 they are unoccupied, but as you uh, go uh, larger and larger in temperature um, there is uh, these distributions kind of uh, tapers down with more uh, weight appearing in the uh, larger energy regime. However, that happens at very high uh, temperatures ok. I mean we have uh, left it as small medium and large but this large is enormously large because uh, the temperature that we need for uh, the distribution to fall to a value half is very large actual value is very large ok. And uh, just to give you that uh, what a large number means like for example, for uh, typical metals like copper or uh, aluminum and so on uh, the, uh, the Fermi temperature which will uh, define later a temperature that is corresponding to this epsilon minus mu equal to 0 that Fermi temperature is of the order of uh, 60, 70,000 Kelvin ok. And that uh, you can understand nothing can survive on earth at that temperature, but that is a Fermi temperature that is a scale of temperature for the degenerate Fermi systems ok. So, we do a discussion on the classical limit. And what is the classical limit? So, we write it down once again uh, for the quantum distribution. Now, we do not need to write down the Maxwell Boltzmann, we will write only Bose Einstein and uh, Fermi Dirac which is e to the power beta epsilon i minus mu plus or minus 1 we know plus sign is for fermions and minus is for bosons. Uh, okay. So, this is the distribution average number of particles. So, at uh, low temperature or large beta what happens uh, for fermions n i average is equal to 1 I mean it can be either 1 or 0, 
but only if epsilon i is less than mu, so uh, low energies. So, we are talking about uh, large beta or, or small temperature and for fermions it is equal to 0 if uh, epsilon i is greater than mu, okay. so this large energies. Now, for bosons, we have a similar uh, thing excepting that uh, this is equal to uh, much, much greater than 1 for low energies. And this is uh, almost equal to 0. for large energies. Okay. So, it is the same thing uh, for large energies both the distribution they uh, kind of give you 0, but uh, at low energies one gives you 1 which is uh, natural and the other gives you much greater than 1. Okay. So, uh, the Bose-Einstein or rather the Maxwell-Boltzmann statistics N i is always much much smaller than uh, 1. Okay. So, for m b particles uh, n i is always much much smaller than 1. Okay. So, the classical case corresponds to uh, exponential a beta epsilon i minus mu minus mu uh, that should be much much greater than 1 for all i right because uh, it is only in that case that the 1 in the denominator would not matter uh, and it is anyway much greater than uh, uh, this the first term would be much greater than the second term and then we can go back to the uh, classical distribution. So, this is naturally the, um, the limit for the classical case. So, that tells you that z f which is equal to exponential beta mu uh, should be much much smaller than 1 uh, for this classical case to occur. So, uh, we uh, let us try to derive it. So, if you remember that a log of z g either it is f d or b e Okay. So, this is equal to plus minus sum over i log of uh, 1 plus uh, plus minus exponential exponential minus uh, beta epsilon i minus mu. So, that is the log of z g and uh, so, we uh, may actually calculate this expansion by noting that, uh, so plus sign is for fermions here and minus sign is for bosons. Okay. So, uh, if you expand this above expression in a uh, small parameter, a uh, small exponential beta mu because this is what we have just shown that the exponential beta mu must be much much smaller than 1. So, if you do that and uh, note that the log of x for x to be small is x minus uh, x square by 2 plus x cube by 3 plus order x to the power 4 and so on. Okay. So, if you keep the uh, first few terms for small x then this log of z g uh, for uh, f d and b e uh, this expansion can be written as um, sum over i exponential uh, minus beta uh, epsilon i minus mu and a minus plus half of uh, sum over i uh, 
minus plus because uh, the uh, initially the plus sign was for fermions and minus for bosons, but then uh, the first term in the expansion is minus. So, it sort of uh, acquires another minus sign. So, for fermions it is uh, minus and for bosons it is plus. So, the top one is for fermion and the bottom one is for bosons. Okay. So, this is uh, understandable and this is exponential minus 2 beta uh, epsilon i minus mu and so on. Okay. Uh, these are so other terms, so which we neglect. So, that is the uh, log of z g and uh, then uh, of course, your uh, n i uh, for f d and b e they uh, can also be expanded. So, exponential uh, minus beta epsilon i minus mu and uh, then there is a 1 minus plus exponential minus beta uh, epsilon i minus mu and so on. Okay. So, uh, this and plus this and so on. Okay. So, uh, you see that we have expanded both the uh, log of the partition function, uh, grand canonical partition function and as well the uh, distribution for small uh, fugacity that is z f to be much smaller than 1 and uh, we get these expressions. So, uh, the dominant term in the expression is what we uh, need to deal with. So, uh, for the log of z g, uh, so the dominant term uh, or the leading term is equal to the classical uh, case. So, this uh, classical will give rise to a summation over i exponential uh, minus beta uh, epsilon i minus mu. So, that is the classical we know that uh, and this n i uh, classical again is equal to the exponential minus beta uh, epsilon i minus mu and you know that these are nothing but coming from the m b distribution and everything makes sense that we uh, at very small fugacity uh, when the exponential beta mu is much much smaller than 1 you can do this expansion of the logarithms and these uh, give you these uh, expressions for the classical case or the Maxwell Boltzmann case. Okay. So, uh, if you take a particular uh, scenario that is your epsilon i which are the single particle states. Now, I put epsilon k epsilon i is equal to epsilon k because uh, we have never specified the uh, the quantum number or the correct you know uh, sort of quantity that uh, expresses this uh, the single particle energies. Uh, let us specify this as epsilon k in this case where k is the momentum and uh, let us uh, the free particle partition function or uh, rather the energy is written as h cross square by h cross square k square by 2 m. So, we are talking about the uh, the single particle energies. So, log of z g uh, let me see what uh, so we wrote classical here. So, classical is equal to I can do uh, uh, and this is exponential uh, minus beta uh, h cross square k square over 2 m minus mu uh, m is the mass of the particle and this is a uh, d uh, you can write it as d cube k or you can sometimes it is written as d k as well with a vector sign they mean the same thing. Okay. So, uh, you need to integrate over all k and again this is a very simple uh, Gaussian integral and one gets it as a v by 2 pi whole cube and uh, exponential uh, of beta mu and a 2 pi m uh, by beta h cross square and whole to the power 3 by 2. And if you want uh, you know there is some other multiplicities such as uh, uh, 2 s plus 1 for the spinner to get in all those things can be added, but they do not uh, uh, need to be here. So, we write this down as uh, a v over 2 pi whole cube and a z f and a 2 pi m by beta h cross square. Uh, by 3 by 2 
and uh, so this is the uh, for small zf zf to be much smaller than 1 uh, you get the log of zg and why we are writing the log of zg would be clear just in a while or rather in the uh, next class because this log of zg is actually related to the thermodynamic uh, parameter which is pv over kt and we'll see that uh, that this equation of state really comes in uh, and the average number of particles what will happen to that or rather if you take this uh, then this is equal to a zf uh, del del zf uh, i'm using results that we have already um, uh, so zg and classical for this we have a v by 2 pi whole cube and a zf uh, 2 pi m by beta h cross square whole to the power 3 by 2 and that should be equal to the total n okay and so uh, we have taken this average number of particles and sum over all the uh, energy states and we know that the total number of particles will have to be uh, n so this is equal to n okay so uh, then what happens is that now we can uh, take this expression and um, rather uh, calculate this uh, uh, zf uh, here from this expression. So, we can calculate z f because this is that fugacity is uh, an important quantity in our discussion and uh, then the z f comes out to be uh, is equal to e to the power beta mu is equal to n over v h cube divided by 2 pi m k t whole to the power 3 by 2. Uh, since zf is much much smaller than 1 so classical limit would correspond to n over v that is the right hand side should also be uh, much less than 1 and something that we have seen earlier is much smaller than 1. So, uh, if you really think that uh, this n by v or v by n, so v by n uh, that is the total volume divided by the total number of particles is equal to something like uh, a cube. Okay? Uh, that is uh, think of these uh, you know the atoms or the molecules that are filling up this entire uh, n number of them filling up the entire volume and um, if you think of them as cubes then it's just a cube equal to v by n but if you think them as hard spheres then it is of course there is a four third pi factor uh, there but we don't uh, really worry about that so this is of the order of uh, a cube or uh, or v over n whole to the power one third is like a so, uh, so a is nothing but the interatomic or intermolecular distance. So, that uh, brings us that if you uh, you know uh, define lambda or sometimes it is written as lambda t uh, let me write it with a lambda t which is equal to uh, this is by this 2 pi m k t. Uh, then uh, that gives us, so this is called as a thermal de Broglie wavelength uh, if you open up everything it has the dimension of length or wavelength. So, uh, A which is V over N whole to the power one third. Uh, must be much much greater than lambda. So, that tells you that the classical uh, statistics dominates uh, either at low densities that is particle densities at large temperatures.
and if both go in hand in hand then of course, it is uh, all the more better than the, the both the quantum statistics they um, boil down to classical statistics and that is what we have seen in the picture as well. Here you see that uh, the large uh, energy regime uh, we can also as I said that uh, the x axis can be uh, you know uh, put as uh, beta into epsilon minus mu. Uh, they would all give you the same uh, uh, this n i to be or rather average of n to be much much smaller. Okay. So, uh, we have derived the distributions, we really know that the, the quantum distributions uh, have a classical limit which merges with the m b distribution with this Gibbs uh, correction being correctly taken into account. Um, so, uh, in a way it looks like the identical indistinguishable particles lose their indistinguishability and uh, becomes distinguishable at these low densities and large number of particles. Okay. We will stop here and we will continue uh, from next class onwards. Thank you.